Bruchem Aboyim. The topic tonight that we'll be discussing is um, something's very important, I think, to the basis of life, and that's something called truth. Uh, the word emet or ms in Hebrew. Uh, it's actually so important that God signs His name. One of the names of God is truth. Uh, to the beginning of creation and the end of creation. If you take the first three words of the book of Genesis, the book of Bereshus, is Bereshus bar Elohim, and God created in the beginning. If you take the last letter of those three words, it spells the word emet, which is truth. And at the end of creation, the last three words are bar Elohim lasos, which God created to do. And again, if you take the last three letters of each of those words, Again, spells the word emet. So God signed his name to the beginning of creation and the end of creation. Again, with this concept of truth. Also in Tehillim, we see that it talks about, we say in Uvul every day, Tit Nemos to Yaakov, that God gave truth to Yaakov and Chesed to Avram, kindness to Abraham. And again, this truth that Yaakov Avinu was the the culmination of his grandfather who had chesed and his father gvura, severity. Together they came together to form which is called truth, which is also called teferis, which is beauty. And it's interesting that the word truth, emet, has a numerical value of 441. And again, numbers and numerical values, gematrias, are very important in Jewish uh, studies. Nothing's an accident. So four form one is nine. And if you take the number nine and multiply it times um, any other number, it comes back to nine. It never changes. Two times eight, probably two times nine is 18, one and eight is nine. Six times nine is 54, five and four is nine. Uh, eight times nine is 72, seven and two is nine. You can take it out as far as you want. Nine will always be nine. It'll always come back because truth is truth. It's an interesting thing. You don't see it in, in, in Hebrew, but in English, a six and a nine really look identical. It's just that it's turned over. Now, six is the number that we give for sheker, for falsehood. And in fact, uh, we drop, as I told you, four, four, and one is nine. The word sheker, falsehood, is 600. So we drop the zeros, which makes it six. So six signifies the word sheker, which is false. So six is false, a nine is true. And in reality, we know they look identical, just one's turned over, so to speak. And that's what the side of evil tells us. I'm really a nine, I just fell over. And the, seeing the differentiation between one to the other is not so simple, because they look so close sometimes, the distance between them. And not only that, it's interesting, the word emes, aleph, mem, tough, all have two legs. Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Mem is the middle letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Tough is the last letter. So truth encompasses everything from beginning to end and the middle. Sheker, on the other hand, is the last three letters out of the four that's missing the tough of the Hebrew alphabet. And each one, the shin's on one leg, the kuf's on one leg, the resh is on one leg. Because falsehood has no real basis to it. It's not solid. It's not firm. And that's what we see. It's interesting that one of the, we believe that after a person's life, the first question that the heavenly court asks a person is, were you honest in business? Not did you learn Torah, not were you a good, were you honest in business? Honesty, one of the most difficult things for a person to do and being truthful. In fact, there's a uh, story they tell about a thief. And even though he was a thief, he had pangs of guilt. And he went to this rabbi, and he said to the rabbi, in front of the Hasidim, his students, you know, I know I should change my ways, but I, I know th that the Torah encompasses so many laws and, and things that you have to do, and I'm a realist. You know, I, I can't do it all. There's just no way. And, but at the same time, I really feel bad, and I would like to do tshuva, I'd like to repent in some way and, and have a relationship with God. I don't want to be a complete stranger. So the rabbi looked at him and said, can you do one mitzvah? And the thief said, one mitzvah? And the rabbi said, yeah, that's it. 
just do one mitzvah and everything will be fine. The thief smiled and said, one mitzvah? I can do any one mitzvah. That's not a problem. It's all the other ones. But one? Sure, I can do one mitzvah. That's all? Rabbi said, yes. He said, okay, what do I have to do? The rabbi said to him, you can never lie. That's it. You always have to tell the truth. He says, that's it? Rabbi says, that's it. Just make up your mind, you know, now that you make a commitment, you will never lie again. You will always tell the truth. And that's all you have to do. He said, great. It's a done deal. Not a problem. And um, he left. About a year later, he comes back. And he walks in. And the students look at him. He looks familiar because when he walks in, He's wearing a black suit. He's got a white shirt on. He's got a beard. Wearing a black hat. He looks like an Orthodox Jew. And they look at him. And one says, aren't you the guy who was in last year, the, the, the thief? And he says, yeah, that was me. They said, but what's this transformation? They, he said, as I remember, the, the Rebbe just said you had to do one mitzvah. What's, what's all of this? He said, I'll tell you what happened. He said, I walked out of here and I was feeling pretty good. I only had one mitzvah to do. And I figured I could handle that pretty easily. So as I was walking out, after all, I was a thief. So I was on my way to rob someone's house. And my friend Harry bumps into me and he says, hey, where are you going? So I'm about to lie and tell him, but I remembered I wasn't going to lie anymore. So I said, I'm going to so-and-so's house to rob him. And I continued on my way. And then I bump into my friend, Joe. And Joe says, hey, how you, where are you going? <laughs> and I realized i got to tell him the truth, too. So now I tell him I'm going to rob this guy. By the time I've told two people, there's no way in the world I can go rob this guy's house. So I, one thing led to another. And by not lying, by telling the truth, the end result was one thing led to another. And here I am today. Just because this, the Rebbe asked me not to lie to tell the truth. That's it. That's the hook. When a person doesn't lie, it changes his whole life. And that becomes the key. So where, where do we see it? Uh, again, this, this, this concept of not lying. Um, we see with Yaakov. Yaakov took the, the blessings from his brother, Esau. He put on his clothing and went to his father. And he was disingenuous with his father. He tried not to out right lie. But he still wasn't telling him the truth. His father thought that it was Esau who he was blessing instead of Yaakov. And by the way, as an aside, how was it that Yaakov, this great son, could be disingenuous? After all, Emes was his trait, truth. His mother made him put on Esau's clothing. So we see the clothing that a person wears has something to do with the way that a person feels, the way that a person acts. You know, it's interesting. If you were to go to a Halloween party and you would put on the garb of a rabbi with the payas and the whole thing, just a costume, you'd find it a little bit difficult to be lewd and to, and to speak, you know, in, in negative terms to swear. It, it, it would feel strange. If you put on a policeman's costume, you'd kind of feel honest, you know, someone that takes care of the law. A woman, if she were to put on a nun's garment, so to speak, she'd feel chastity. On the other hand, if she put on a prostitute's thing, she'd feel pretty easy about things, and people would identify the same way towards her. So what you wear also makes a difference. So Yaakov, his mother, had him put on the clothes of Aesop so that he could be just disingenuous with his father. What happened? In history, all that goes around comes around. When his brothers... The brothers of Yosef sold him to Egypt and they took his coat of many colors. They dipped it into the blood of a, of a sheep and they handed it to their father. And they said, you recognize this. So they didn't quite actually lie, but he assumed that an animal had torn up Yosef. Again, being disingenuous. And this all that goes around comes around. He caused his father this aggravation by taking the blessings that were due to Asa. And now his sons do the same to him and are disingenuous. 
And it's interesting that when they go to Egypt and they find that Yosef is alive, and they come to tell their father the truth, he doesn't believe them. Because <laughs> that's the, that, that is the, the plight of a liar. That when he tells the truth, people don't believe him. They believe him better when he tells a lie somehow than when he tells the truth. When he wants to be believed, he can't be. Yaakov had to ask the head of the caravan if what they were saying was true. And he, that was the one who he believed. So, the, the, but at the same time, the Torah, you know, people sometimes are, let's go, before we get into that, people, how do we know that it's such a great trait? In the Shema Yisrael, the premier prayer that we say, Hero Israel, the only prayer we really have, that's Torahic. It says, Limadatem Osem Esmenechem, you should teach your children. Now the word Osem is the same word as Emet, if you move the letters around. So what it's really telling us, for the monotem emes levnechem, you should teach your children to be honest, to be truthful. It's very important. Where do they learn it from? From you. When your children see that you never lie, then they have an example for themselves to never lie. And this becomes so important. It's not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. Being an example for your children in the way that you deal with life. Teach truth to your children. And at the second, third paragraph of the Shema, where it says, Zachartim is called mitzvah Hashem. You should remember all the commandments of God, Vyasisim Osam, and do them. Again, Osam is Emes. Do them in a truthful way. Do them with the belief. Do them with honesty. And that's important. That a person has to cast commitment to truth all the time. Because that's what the Torah is. The Torah is truth. There's nothing about the Torah that is not true. And that's why, because God is within the Torah. But what's interesting is we see this truth in every Shabbos. Again, numerical male 702 is 9, which is truth. And again, we said chesed is truth. In fact, when we talked about emes and chesed, 9 and 9 is 18, which is gematria of the word chai, which is life. How do you get life? through kindness and truth, then that becomes the key. When a person is honestly kind to people, and especially when you can feel it within you, this gives you life and gives other people life. But at the same time, it's amazing. When people lie, you really need to waste room in your hard drive remembering what you said. Because once you tell a lie, a lie begets a lie. And that lie begets another lie. And then a person winds up in this quicksand that he can't get out of. And it's interesting that when a person tells the truth, you have no memory whatsoever because you don't remember anything because everything you say is true. On the other hand, we see with Sarah that God, when God told her she'd have a child, she laughed and said that her master, that her master was old, her husband. And when God tells Abram Ravinu, God says, not what she said, he said she laughed, but she said that she was old. So we see, truth doesn't mean that you should go around hurting people. If someone, you know, there's a commercial about Lincoln, you know, his wife asking, am I fat? You know, do you tell a woman she's fat? Never, you know. You compliment something, but you don't, you don't, sometimes a white lie, so to speak, as we call it. But you have to be careful. Because what people do is they extend it to the point of everything becomes a lie. Because of shalom, because of peace, they don't want to hurt anybody, so they always lie. So again, a person should be, should be conscious of the fact, don't hurt someone. But at the same time, you cannot tell a lie that changes things. You can tell a lie that saves a person's feelings. Also, you know, many times when we tell the truth, we tell the truth so that my burden of guilt is given to you. So I'm going to confess to you everything I've done wrong so that you know about it and you have to carry it because now I've cleaned my conscience. Sometimes when you do something wrong, what you need to do is do your own tshuva. What you need to do is carry that guilt yourself and do regret it and, and use it to always make you better. Don't give it to someone else to carry. If a person has done something, sometimes you have to admit it and other times it's, you do not admit it because it just makes the other person feel bad. Even in relationships, uh, when a person, sometimes a man will meet a woman in the secular world, and he wants to know her past. You don't have to tell anyone your past. You are who you are today. Because once you start open that Pandora's box, then they want to know everything, and many times that destroys the relationship. What you see in front of you is what you love. It says when God created Chava, 
he put Adam to sleep so he wouldn't see how he would put them together. All he saw was the end, which was beautiful. If you meet someone and you love them, love what you see in front of you. You don't need to dissect every part of them to know the truth of every little thing because it may not be pretty. That's why God put skin over all of us because the organs don't look so nice. When you cover them with gift wrapping, everything looks great. So always remember, tell the truth, but at the same time, be kind and be considerate of others. But in the end, again, a person has to tell the truth about things, but in a kind, kind way. May God bless you to make the right decision as to when to be nice, and, but always be truthful. God bless and have a great Shabbos.